Okay, so this is the recording for both the digestive system structures and then both of the reproductive system structures. So we have the same rats that we had last time. This time, when we look in the neck, there's this large uh, submandibular gland that's visible. We move the heart out of the way. Last time we have the trachea right next to it is the esophagus. The esophagus is going to go through that thoracic cavity, passing through the diaphragm, and it's going to empty into the stomach. Now, because of the size of the stomach, we don't get to see every portion but you can definitely see the body of the stomach and the pyloric stomach where it gets narrow. You can see the beginning of the duodenum. This is part of the greater omentum. We hold up the intestines, we can see the mesentery, it's transparent, part of that parietal peritoneum. If we move things over, we can typically find the cecum, which is this big pocket here it folds over, so it's going to get chyme and feces from the ileum, and then it empties into the ascending a colon. You're not really going to see an ascending colon or a transverse colon, but you see a cecum, and you can see the descending colon coming down the middle. There's that spleen. The pancreas is embedded in this mesentery. It's all of this glandular tissue. It extends across all the way over to the other side of the body. And then it would eventually go into the rectum, the anus is the opening at the base of the tail. We go back and take a look at the liver. The left side of the liver, left lobes, is going to have two pieces and it's much bigger than in us. Right lobe of the liver, quadrate lobe of the liver first, and then caudate lobe of the liver. For the reproductive structures, you can see the scrotum and then the retracted penis. It's easier to expose the retracted penis 
first. This is where we start using a scalpel. You have from here all the way over to here for cutting. Don't cut down. You need to slice parallel to your specimen. You also don't want to cut something you're going to need. So again, we're going to use the force or the probe this time to make sure we don't cut too deep. So that gets through the skin. Okay, we open this up. We can then see the prep use. Now, this has debris coming out of the penis. Let's get rid of that because that's not typical. The expanded distal end is the glans penis. And then usually we can isolate the prep use, which is this thin membrane here that would cover the penis. So this is regular skin. The prep use is deep to that and or the yeah the prep use and then the glans penis is the expanded distal end. So yes I did slice it a bit. Um, we can see the Body of the penis up in this area. So for the scrotum, we're only going to open up one side so we can leave the other side intact. Again, if we just pinch up a little bit and make an opening. and then use the forceps as a guide so we don't cut too far or too deep. That way we can expose the testis and the epididymis, as well as the vas deferens. So we can scoop out one testis. You can see the epididymis here and it comes around and folds back and then becomes the vas deferens. This would be some more of the epididymis. And you can see that vas deferens 
going up and looping back near the urinary bladder. Oh, nope. Near the urinary bladder. This protrusion is part of the prostate gland. This is the urinary bladder. And then if we put the testis back, There are two fan-shaped glands that are the seminal vesicles. Here and here. Sometimes they don't develop very much in a young rat but they would get bigger. So urinary bladder is bigger. Prostate gland protrudes out. And in some of them, it's in two pieces. Vas deferens looping through and around. So that would be the male. Then if we take a look at our female rat, we don't believe it had, oh yeah, it did. You can again see the submandibular gland here in the throat. The parotid gland would be closer to the ear. Next to the trachea would be the esophagus. Oh, silly thing. Okay. Passing behind the lungs, going through the diaphragm, into the stomach. Oops. So you can see the body of the stomach, pyloric stomach, duodenum. Again, cecum is going to be a big pouch somewhere in the middle. It'll have a smaller tube going in, and that's the ileum. Again, you have the mesentery. And then the rest of the colon. We roll things over. You can see the descending colon. Again, the anus is going to be at the base of the tail. They only have the one external, one other external orifice for both the vaginal canal and the urethra. So this is going to be vaginal opening. The urethra dumps into the vaginal canal so the urine would also come out there as well. So this is a female that's never been pregnant. This is what we call a uterine horn. This would be the other one because they're set up to have litters instead of single fetuses. There's a mass of tissue here, which is the ovary. We flip everything over here. 
Same kind of thing. Get rid of some of the adipose. Ovary. Very uneven surface. The two uterine horns are going to unite in the body of the uterus. If we can get it to come up. There we go. And then that's going to narrow and go into the vaginal canal. I have another female rat. I'm hoping at least has been pregnant once. So you can see the difference between the two uterine horns. And uh, then you can see the size difference. Again, not sure because this is one we've had a while. And this pink that you see is the latex they put into the blood vessels. This one's kind of dried out. See if we can get through, there we go, get through the muscle wall. Oh, this one's all. Messed up inside. And will require rinsing. And I don't think that she was pregnant, so. I guess we won't see that, but what happens is the uterine horns expand with each pregnancy. They're not going to completely deflate or diminish after the pregnancy. They're typically about the size of the intestines after at least one pregnancy. And so that gets you the digestive system and the two uh, reproductive systems.